Welcome back to the system design series. In this one, we're going to be examining this current structure of our engine system. And we're going to be talking about RabbitMQ and specifically using streams in RabbitMQ. If you want to look at how we can use streams in RabbitMQ in the context of .NET, go check out my one of my last videos where I walk through um, how you can use them and how they're different from uh, classic cues inside of RabbitMQ. So let's get right into this. And tonight I do have my my T, so this should be a this should be a fun one because I think we're going to get into some important concepts. All right, so RabbitMQ. This is our current design. We have a basic two-stroke engine front end, which you've seen on the channel. If you haven't seen any of those videos, go check out basically a year's worth of content in my daily stand-up series where I go over creating this uh, system. But this is a hypothetical off of that real system that I made. So we have a two-stroke engine front end. We have an engine API, a road API, and a truck API that all communicate with the front end. And we also have an engine database. And again, hypothetical system, but this is what we're going to be working with. And our current problem with this system is that we're experiencing a bottleneck in the truck API. We're experiencing slowness on the engine database. And also we have no historical reporting for any of our engine data. So data is just getting lost. We don't have any way to, to track it right now. So that's a problem. And I left these vague intentionally because in the real world, so to speak, you're not going to get a perfect write-up of what the problem of the system is. A lot of the times it's going to be a vague description, something in tune to like this. So the first one, let's break it down. So if we have a bottleneck in the truck API, the first thing we should do is do some form of load testing on the API to see where the slowness is happening. And if we do have logs, we can see not only the request response duration, but we can see how many requests we're making per minute. And that per minute uh, should give us a good value. And if it's below the threshold of what we should expect, we know that we probably have to offload some processing from that API. We either we have to do that or we have to refactor some queries. Uh, we have to do something. But in the context of this, I'm going to assume that, okay, our truck API is doing something that is taking simply too long to process it's holding up the show on the front end, and we got to do something about that. So I'm going to drag these guys over because we are going to add in a queue. And so what we're going to do with the queue is we're going to pick a shape for the queue. We're going to make it, uh, what shape should we make it today? It's always different. You guys want to make it uh, this cone? We'll put a cone in there. So we'll just, we'll just call it queue. Again, we're keeping it really, really simple. So we're going to add a queue. And basically what is going to happen now is the truck API is basically not going to effectively process this, the data the same way. So we are going to basically offload some processing by way of sending a message to this queue. And then since we don't want to kick that back, uh, we well, I should say that basically now we're putting the truck data coming from the front end to over into this queue. So the front end is no longer waiting in, in, in a sense for that to, to effectively finish, right? That request response. And I'm going to assume that the truck API is kind of already at its like max. It's not a good API. It wasn't written well. So I'm actually going to introduce a new API entirely. And we're just going to simply call this the processing API. Very vague, I know, but just it'll help us, I think, keep, keep you know, terms, terms in this. So the processing API, oh, I should probably not have these be, okay. And we're going to have that be, whoops, wrong way. There we go. The processing API is going to be the consumer of the message off of that queue the processing API, and then 
going to return the result back to the truck API like this. So now the truck API, and we can actually do that with, if we want to have another queue, because I was thinking we could either post that, post that to there, but we might actually want to introduce another queue up there. So we're going to send the message up to the processing, like the result up to this other queue. And we're going to have a listener or a consumer on the truck API to get that message. And then when it gets back to the truck API, we're going to send that message down to the front end. And I'm not going to go into this depth now. We can do, we can use that with WebSockets, Signal R. Either way, we're going to send that back down to the front end. So that should solve our bottleneck problem in the truck API just fine. The next one is we have just kind of generic engine DB database slowness. And something that we can kind of go into with that is the engine database, we're going to assume we can scale. And if we, if we say we can scale this, we're going to say we can scale it uh, horizontally. So all I'm going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to add, we're going to add two more nodes to this. So we're going to make a cluster of engine DB. So instead of just talk, communicating with one instance of engine DB, we're going to now communicate with um, a cluster of engine DB. So now it's contained in our cluster that can scale automatically. Engine DB cluster. And obviously my assumption is that it's some form of scalable database, whether that's in the cloud or whatever it is. That's my assumption. If it's not a scalable database, we can look into scaling it just simply vertically, whereas increasing the, um, you know, increasing the whatever instance the database is on, um, we can do that. We can increase, uh, we can try to optimize the um, queries on the engine API. And I think we really need to examine the, the queries even when we do the, make the cluster of the databases. Because if we're already experiencing slowness, that usually is indicative of either poor performing queries, uh, or maybe we're doing full table scans, maybe we're doing very complex joins on the tables. Maybe the data is simply not normalized in a way where it allows for optimized queries. So these are some of the things that you can bring up and discuss and see you know kind of where it leads but this is going to be what i'm choosing to do so the next one the last one is we have no reporting for any of the data coming from the engine so we're sending the, all this engine data when our two stroke is running we're sending all that data per uh rotation of the cylinder but we're not we're losing it we're not capturing it anywhere because simply we're just throwing it up to the api and we're posting, you know, snapshots of it. But we want to get all the history from a specified time period up until the present time. And you got to ask yourself, okay, well, how do we do that? You know, we can use, we can do that through logs if we want to log each of those things. Uh, that would be quite a bit of logs, and it would kind of limit us in terms of if we want to act on that information at all, if we want to manipulate the data in some way. So one thing we can introduce, because we're already using RabbitMQ in our system, is we could introduce a stream in RabbitMQ. So what I'm going to do is actually, instead of a queue, this is going to be a stream. And again, this is RabbitMQ. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our engine API effectively offload we're going we're gonna to post that data up to the stream or publish that data to the stream. And I'm going to, whoops, oh, it's backwards. Huh. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So we're going to go here, publish that data to the stream. And our engine API is going to be a one consumer of that stream. 
And I'm, I'm going to change the shape of this, actually, because I don't think that that's a good, you know, like, shape for what a stream is. I'm going to make this a stream because I think it's more kind of descriptive of what's happening. So we have our stream, and we have one consumer off the stream, which is the Engine API, and it will resume processing, like, normally and again we just have to then add some kind of connection if we need to from the front end but in this case I'm just going to focus on the stream so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce um, I'm actually going to just tie the processing API into the stream because we're going to assume that that API is able to handle it so I'm going to make the processing API a consumer off the stream and that's going to specify a snapshot um, time specify timestamp to get to present so when the processing API Actually, let's think about this because this actually raises an important important thing here. I assumed that we could connect to the processing API, but the problem with that is if we want this to be a reporting tool, we don't want to actually tie into the processing API because the processing API, I'm assuming, is just kind of a long-running service, right? We're not going to bring it down, bring it up, whatever. And so if we specify a timestamp, we can only do that one time and that wouldn't be good in the context of the processing API. What we should do, we should actually introduce some just kind of console application that we could then pass as an, whether that's an argument or whether that's some kind of, uh, may, we'll, may, we'll probably make it a setting maybe, but we're gonna make a new, we're actually gonna eliminate that connection. We're gonna make this, um, we're just gonna make a con basic just console app we're going to allow a either a setting or an argument to be passed into the console app when it runs to then get to be a consumer of the stream. It's going to pull the data from that uh, stream, and then you know once it has the data, once it has the snapshot of data that we're looking for from the stream, we can find some way to to uh, terminate that. Uh, process and effectively end what the console app is doing but now we actually we have um, that data accessible to us because we now are using streams in RabbitMQ and again you can specify a timestamp to go back you know however long in, in history uh, you need to get start getting data from you can specify a filter uh, so if you have a specific header you want to filter on or whatever it is, you can you can do that. Uh, you can specify an offset. You can specify um, a max age for how long the data, I believe, should remain on the stream. Um, but this gives us a lot, this gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of okay, what can we actually do with the data? So let's just say okay, now we have our data from our console app and now we can send it over you know into whatever reporting tool you want we're gonna make this crazy shape so reporting <laughs> our reporting tool and that you see all that text formatted it like kicked it over to like okay let's do a line what <laughs> what's happening what you what is it well I'm gonna leave it I think it's kind of funny I don't know why it made like okay but we're going to send it over to whatever reporting tool we want. So this is one way to go about solving some kind of potential problem like this. And streams, again, if you haven't looked at my last video, very, very powerful technology within RabbitMQ. And uh, in the last video, I used Mass Transit to connect to my stream, and it just worked really, really well. So, again, as you're kind of going through this, as you're... You know, whenever you're working through some kind of system design, there's a number of ways to do a lot of things, right? There's not there's not one singular way to go about solving a problem. What's more important is that you go about talking about 
what you're thinking and talking about how you are trying to go about solving the problem because that's really what you're trying to get across in whenever you know whenever you're in a system design interview it's not so much you know selecting the perfect technology that's a little bit like selecting the right thing but it's it's more about let's talk through what the problem is let's talk through our assumptions let's talk through the implications of the decisions that we have to make and if we can you know do something better and it's okay to make a mistake because that shows that you're thinking it would be a little like if you did everything perfect the first time that's good but it's that might not be you know super realistic right so Again, these are my problem statements for this design. This is just one potential way you could go about doing this. Obviously, it's, you know, some of it is kind of ambiguous for a reason. I laid out my assumptions. I backtracked on one connection from the stream to processing API. Um, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know um, what you think about RabbitMQ streams or honestly just system design in general because this is what we do on this channel a lot of the times uh and oh and if you are wanting to um talk about system design or anything i do i i did start a discord uh which should be linked in the description um so you can go check that out um but yeah that's all i got for today i'll see you on the next one